Since I'm a computer expert, I get asked all the time to help out friends and family with their computer problems. And it's also part of my day job to share screens in meetings and gain remote access to a bunch of systems. So I'm going to show you how you can help anybody with their PC problems like a pro with five different tools. So let's start off easy with the old RDP client. This guy's been around for a very long time and you can use it on any Windows client or server operating system. When you open RDP, you just type in the name of the computer or its IP address and click connect. Just sign in and you're ready to roll. But if you want to help somebody else, we need to dive a little bit deeper. The Windows client OS is made to only have one active user at a time. So when you remote in, you're going to kick the other person out. Now Windows Server lets multiple people in at once, but each one has their own user session. So you can't see what the other person's doing on their desktop. But this old dog isn't done yet. Just go to the run command and type MSTSC space forward slash question mark, then hit OK. Now here are all of these switches that you can use with RDP. And at the bottom, you notice there's a switch here for shadow along with control. Now for shadow, you're gonna need a session ID. So how do we find that? Well, on the remote computer, you'll have to have that user open a command prompt and type in the command QWINSTA. Now they'll need to tell you the session number that they're using, and then you can go to run and type in mstsc.exe space forward slash V colon and put in the name or IP address of that target machine space forward slash shadow colon and then put in the session number. Now, if you want to additionally take control, just add the space forward slash control switch, and then they'll be prompted to grant you permission so that you can shadow them or take control or whatever you're doing. But you actually don't always need to wait for permission. You can try using the space forward slash no consent prompts, but whoops, uh, you getting, you really can't take control without asking, <laughs> or can you? Now we need a new policy setup to go to this path here in the GPMC. And the rule that you need to enable is called set rules for remote control. On the Intune side, when you create your new policy, make sure it's for Windows 10 and that you're using a type of template, then select admin templates. Give it a name and a description, click next. And then you wanna type here in the filter box, set rules. And the only one that should come up is set rules for remote control. And from here, it's exactly the same thing. You enable the feature, and then you need to choose what level of control you're looking for. So in my case, I want full control without consent. So I'm gonna set that on both sides, and that'll take care of all of my devices. Once the policy gets pushed out to all of those computers, I can remote in with that no consent flag, and I'm good to go. Just be careful how you use your new superpower. After all, we are admins, not super villains. Now, if you're using Azure Virtual Desktop, there's really no native remote control or shadow tool yet, but who knows, we'll see what happens. So there's nothing stopping you from using the old RDP client to shadow your users here as well. But getting their session number is a lot easier. Over here in the AVD admin portal on the left, go to users and type in the user's name. Then you wanna click on the sessions tab and then you've got the session number right there, plug that into your MSTSC command and you're done. And by the way, if you'd like to see a native shadowing tool built into the portal here, comment below with the words shadow and I'll pass that along to the product group and see what we can do. The next tool we can talk about is Quick Assist. This is a built-in app in your Windows client that does what RDP client could do, but it's a lot more user-friendly. Now, as the person doing the helping, you're gonna need a Microsoft account and of course an internet connection. But the person who needs the help doesn't actually need to have a Microsoft account to use it, which is nice. But of course they do need to be online. Now you can open the app by clicking start and typing the word quick. And the best match here should be for quick assist. The other way to open it is with a keyboard shortcut, which is control plus the Windows key and Q. As the admin, just click on help someone, sign in with your Microsoft account if you have to, and you'll get a code that will expire in 10 minutes. Now just talk those other people through opening their quick assist and have them type in this code and click submit. Tell them to click share screen and allow you to access. And then as the helper, you'll see the prompt to view or request full control, which is what I'd suggest. 
Now you can just watch them and get them to the right answers, or in the case of my uncle, you can just do it all for them. So overall, a pretty great tool, and it's already part of every Windows device. Now, of course, Quick Assist isn't going to work on Windows Server. For that, you can use RDP, like we've already shown, or Azure Bastion. Now, this is a feature that I've covered in depth in other videos on my channel, and it's what turns the Azure portal into a jump server so that you can remote directly into any one of your virtual machines without a VPN. And everything stays secure because it's all done through a custom protocol secured with certificates all through the portal instead of RDP's well-known 3389 port. Which brings us to the last tool in this video, Remote Help. This is part of Microsoft Intune as an add-on feature, and like everything else in Intune, it's gonna have full RBAC control and is integrated directly with Azure Active Directory which gives you increased security over all the other solutions we talked about. But the main benefits of this over Quick Assist is that the help desk can also elevate within their session without getting all of those annoying UAC prompts, which Quick Assist can't do. And another way that it's secure is that you have to assign the people in your organization the right to even use remote help and the right to help others. Over here in the Intune portal, you wanna click over there on Tenant Administration. Now scroll down on the left for Intune add-ons. Here you can get the licensing for remote help directly right over here, or even as part of the new Intune suite up here. And if you wanna see a video on Intune suite, comment below with the words Intune suite, and I'll take care of that for you. But for now, click over here to view the details. And once you're done reading about all of it, click here to buy or start a free trial. That'll take you to the M365 Admin Center. On the right, you can click for the free trial, which is good for 250 user licenses and for 90 days. Then just click here to try now. Either way, it will take somewhere between a few minutes and eight hours for all the licenses to show up. Because as we all know, Intune does not move fast. Once it is done though, we can assign some users. So jump back to Intune, and you should still be here in Tenant Administration. So scroll up till you find roles. Then you want to give a look at the help desk operator. This guy has access to all of the remote help functions like shadow, elevate, and take remote control. Then go to the assignments on the left and to give the assignment a name, then a description, and then click next and add your groups. And then search for the help desk group that you want to add and click next. Now the scopes group here is important because here's where you add the users and devices that the help desk will be allowed to help with remote help. So I'll just add all of my users and all devices. But if you have a more specific way of handling all that with your groups, use that instead. As for the scope tags on the next page, you can use those if you have them and then click create. Now the remote help app is a Win32 app and it needs to be installed on the helper and the user's Windows device. Now they can download the app themselves through the web if you allow that sort of thing. And the address here is aka.ms forward slash download remote help. And it's also linked in the video description. Now, if you don't allow users to install stuff on their own, you're gonna have to download the Win32 package and then repackage it as an Intune Win file, which you can push out just like any other Intune app. Now, when they need help, you open the app and so does the help desk person. Both of you sign in and authenticate to your organization and it will look a lot like Quick Assist with several other advantages. The help desk side will generate the code and share it with the user just like before. And the helper will be able to see the information about the person that they're connecting to and trying to help. Here they can choose to shadow or take control. On the user side, they can see the person who's requesting to help them, and here the user can allow or deny the connection. So since remote help is also a part of Intune, it's aware of the user's devices. Is it a BYOD device that we talked about earlier? Or is it uh, compliant? Is it enrolled? You know, all of those states are here so that the help desk person is given the option to leave the session on a untrusted or unenrolled or non-compliant device. And also back here in the Intune portal, when you go back to the remote help section, you've got all the historical data of the average session time, total number of sessions. And if you click over here on the remote help sessions tab, you have the session history with the help desk person who connected to each of the users. So you have some additional tracking and accountability. So which one of these was your favorite tool? 
or is there a tool that you like better that we should do a video on? So comment below and let me know. And if you like this video, you are gonna love this one. And happy learning.